So we have uh, the, the uh, gel separator. That's the most important equipment. Uh, and then you have you have a venipuncture set up. Uh, this is the needle that you're going to extract the PRP with. This is the adapter that you're going to hook up to the um, syringe that will hook up to this. Not included in the uh, Eclipse package are two 3cc syringes and two 30 gauge needles. And what I'm going to do is, I am. Uh, what they like to do is suck out the platelet rich plasma with one of their 10 cc's. And they put 6 cc's all in the 10 cc syringe and then you inject it with a 27 gauge needle in the scalp. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to suck out 3 cc's and 3 cc's so I have more control over this 3 cc needle and that's the one we in this, in this institution are used to injecting with. Uh, and we'll use a 30 gauge needle because it's just nicer for the patient. At the beginning of the procedure there is a folder that contains a variety of things. Okay, uh, The first one is a patient consent for medical photography. The second one is a consent form for the procedure. It has information about the procedure as well as the actual um, consent on the back. We have a note that already has what you've done uh, in the plan, so all you have to write is where they have alopecia and fill out the top part. And uh, Then there are labeled, there are, are, are stickers. And uh, what I'd like to do is for any one day, well, any one person, for any one day, you label three stickers with the name, the date, the date of birth, and the time. Okay, so, uh, I, you know, we're going to, you know, I'm pretending to do venipuncture. We, you pop it, the blood goes in, you take it out, and, you, you, okay, that part's done. I just took 22 mLs of blood, this is food coloring for the video. Uh, you put the name and the date of the patient on the tube. We're going to take it to the lab to spin. We turn the power on the centrifuge. We press the button to open the centrifuge. I guess it just opens. You put this opposite. This thing comes out. Okay. And uh, when you put it in, it's not important. But when you take it out, you have to take it out. Uh, like this so that you can rest it without um, disturbing it. This is balanced. They have four holes here. So you can put, uh, this is the balancing tube and this is the specimen tube. So you close it, you lock it, like so. Uh, and this is already preset to the 2950 RPMs and it's set for 10 minutes and uh, a break of three. Uh, so all you do is uh, press start. So you had to turn it this way. Now press start. And now the timer starts. Now it is stop. Great, so it beeps and now we can unlock the machine, open the machine, and now the idea is you take this out like this and you can rest it here. Once you take this out, you can, you can put this in the test tube holder, replace, the, replace that there. Uh, we've taken the, the blood from the centrifuge, it's all spun down, uh, and now we have to extract the uh, platelet poor plasma. The way we do this is you have this ring stand, test tube uh, holder, test tube rack set up, okay? You, you put the vacutainer as such and you secure it in the test tube holder, okay? So, and you want it to be so that when I'm ready to pull a needle out, when I pull this up, it's not coming up. I have a lot of force there, okay? So, so that's good. We have this very long needle that you open from the bottom and then decap from the top, okay? Uh, you don't want any air or liquid to reflux back into here. So if, if you are up here 
and then the vacuum refluxes it back, it'll create a turbulence that will make platelets come from the bottom where you just spun them, and you'd have to re-spin the blood. Uh, and that's an extra 10 minute penalty. Uh, so you start, you start with this closed. I like to put my pinkies on the ring stand uh, and position the needle centrally and then you push down carefully until you feel the give and then you position the needle to the middle somewhere a little above the middle okay and the idea now is uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up the plunger and I again when I'm pulling up with this I can't if my thumb gets weak and it goes back down I've ruined it so you have to figure out what's good for you whether it's just your thumb or whether it's your fingers uh, or what have you but at no point in time must this plunger go up and then down so let's let's have at it and I'm doing it slow I'm not sucking fast I'm just slow and steady wins the race but don't go too slow because it'll go down on you you have to keep the pressure up to keep sucking the liquid out. And it gets more difficult as you create more and more of a vacuum. And now, I wanna pull it out with my fingers below. So, if a little bit refluxes back at this point, it doesn't matter. If turbulence happens at this point, I'm gonna be shaking this anyway, so that's okay. But if turbulence happens in mid-suck, then uh, you have ruined it and it comes out. Uh, and now you, you take this out and you one, two, three. But this is what a spun tube looks like. You see that? Okay, we're gonna put it in the ring stand here. Now we have to take off five cc's, all right? So look at this interesting trick. We're gonna put the needle in okay and we put it into you know somewhere about five cc's worth but now since we don't want uh, pressure on the um, plunger I'm gonna put in another uh, needle just for air so as I suck liquid out air is gonna come in and there's gonna be no vacuum and that way we won't run the risk of disturbing the uh, platelet pellet at the bottom so we're, we're taking off five cc's of stuff and you'll notice that you see the plunger just stays so that's wonderful so I take this out and I could take this out too and discard them now you're ready to draw up your plasma platelet rich plasma how do we do this first we have to attach the adapter here and we have to put this with no air and the adapter the adapter here so now this is this is going to be able to suck out you have it now all suspended and sometimes you see particulate matter there uh, and that's okay and then uh, and then you go ahead and um, you know this is as as before so I'm just going to do one of them you put it in here and you suck out, you try to do it kind of slowly if possible and then you take this off and you put on a 30 gauge needle and you're ready and then you screw on. Now notice that you have to hold this thing here and this thing here so you screw the wings and you support this. If you don't support this it breaks in half and then you push it down again and Pull it out, take it out, support the base, put the 30 gauge, the next one. Now you are left with, and notice how um, I, the cap is on when I push the air out. So if any blood spurts, it spurts into the cap and not to my eyes. Uh, now, I have, now I have two PRPs ready to inject into somebody's scalp. So uh, once you have the, um, you know, your, your samples uh, ready, I, I think it's appropriate to label each sticker with each, each syringe with a, a label. So in this case, we have Al Opisha, that's our patient, and um, that here's, you know, 
uh, name, date of birth, 2468, who do we appreciate, today's date, and the time. Um, and the other thing that I would say is, uh, as a point of interest, is I, I wouldn't... Um, I wouldn't do two patients at once because there's too much of a high risk of mixing up test tubes in the centrifuge. I would just do them in series and there's no chance of mixing up one person's blood with another person's blood.